New Hope, Pastor Gary here. I hope our video today finds you all in good health. We pray God's blessing upon you and your families and his protection over you. And I pray for a quick end to this COVID epidemic. And I just ask God's blessing on our land. We pray for those in authority over us, those in leadership, for the elected officials, and that God works uh, through the lives of these that we have elected. Today in our devotional, I'd like to talk to you about the eight steps. I call them spiritual arithmetic, but it's basically eight steps, uh, eight concepts, eight words that will help guide the Christian life. Uh, today, I see so many Christians who are bickering and disappointed because of election results. I see people on both sides arguing, uh, just not a good spirit, and not a, not a good situation. We're a very divided people. What does God have to say about this? Well, God has an answer for we as believers. You and I have uh, a different call on our life. And unfortunately, we can't make the, the world the church, so we have to leave their, their spiritual condition in their hands to pray for them and do all we can to win them to Christ uh, because Jesus is, in fact, the only hope for this world. So in 2 Peter chapter 1, Peter goes into uh, a following list of steps uh, just as... A, a guideline or examples or what we should do to obtain spiritual maturity and to walk in the spirit as God wants us to walk. If we do these eight basic steps, we will not be unfruitful in our Christian lives. We'll not be barren. In other words, we will have souls to lay at the master's feet when this life is over. And God can use us if we follow these eight eight basic rules. So here we go from 2 Peter chapter 2. It says it all starts with faith. And it says to add to your faith virtue. The King James Bible uses the word virtue. The NAS, NASB and other versions use the terms moral excellence. And I think about what life would be like if the church, just people in the church, exercised moral excellence. What a different world it would be. So follow along as we go from faith to moral excellence, moral excellence to knowledge. How does knowledge come? Knowledge comes from reading God's Word. And we're not talking about how many electrons are in the universe or how far it is to the sun, or how fast is the speed of light. We're talking about knowledge that applies to our spiritual lives, our daily walk, and that only comes through the Word of God. So add virtue to our faith, add knowledge to our virtue, and next we are to add temperance or self-control to our knowledge. Again, what would the world be like if the church exercised moral excellence and self-control? Well, the next step Peter gives us, adding to our temperance or self-control, patience. Patience. Somebody said one time, uh, they prayed, Lord, I need patience and I need it now. Well, um... We don't always get patience that way. It means to persevere. NASB and again other translations use the word perseverance. To be able to just tough it out. To set our hearts and our minds uh, on the right path. And when God answers, because he's in control, when God answers, he'll work things out uh, for our benefit. And we have to rely on him uh, in that case. To that perseverance or patience, we add godliness. And it goes without saying what godliness is. Godliness is uh, the act of following God and doing whatever 
God would want us to do. A generation back, young people used to wear uh, these uh, bracelets that had the initials uh, WWJD, what would Jesus do? I think that's a good mantra for we in the church today. What would Jesus do? And then try to emulate what he does. To that godliness, we are to add, again, spiritual arithmetic, brotherly kindness. I've known of lawsuits that have broken out between church members and fist fights and all kinds of things. If we all just followed these eight steps, there would not be that kind of thing. And, of course, brotherly kindness, Jesus said, by this all men will know that you are my children if you have love one for another. And so Peter adds charity or love to brotherly kindness. Uh, agape or agape, we pronounce it, but agape love is the God love. It's, it's uh, not the other types of love mentioned in the New Testament, but this is the kind of love that God has for us. And we should allow that love to flow through us into the others. So if we, if we do our spiritual arithmetic, adding to our faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, a brotherly kindness, and charity makes it all work, we will never be barren, we'll never be unfruitful, we will always fulfill what God has a purpose in our lives. And that's a word for today. Uh, God bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, his shalom. God bless.